Welcome back, my Frostlings, to Let's Play Castlevania The Dracula X Chronicles. I am your host, Alexander Frost, and this is Episode 3. And I wonder, what does that thing in the upper left mean? It says credits, and then it says rest. I know rest means how many lives I have, and this is one of those games that counts zero as a life, so I have four lives, and I know when I unpause it's going to go back to my score, and I'll have uh, about 20,000 points, but what does credit mean? I know it goes up when I get money, but what does it mean? If someone knows, please tell me in the comment section below. I would greatly appreciate it. Alright! These are the Spearmen. You want to be careful with these guys. I am not getting that. Get rid of that knife, thank you. They like to block your attacks, but Holy Water can hit them twice, which is why I'm keeping it. You want to be careful with these guys. You don't even want to touch their spearheads at all, because they will hurt you. Patience is what you want to employ with these guys. Hi! Now technically, if you're feeling brave, whenever they lean back to do that, that swipe, you can try and hit them. It's risky, though, so remember that. I was, about, I was trying to double jump over that and I fudged it up. Oh, fudge. Well, there goes my perfect. Oh, well. A couple hearts from the trouble. Thankfully, this guy's in such a position that I can just, you know, stand over here and hit him. Now, the two dragon heads that are here, technically, you don't have to fight them. You could very easily just, you know, walk over them. This is one of the few enemies that can't hurt you when you stand on them. Hi! Yep, I can hit you. Because their attacks are off-screen, so they can't hit me. And the developers of the game knew that this was a tough spot, so just in case you need it after getting through here, Mysterious Hidden Roost a Dungeon Wall Chicken. Now, to find your way to the B path of this is a little tricky. Fortunately, the game is nice. If you fall down there, you'll just fall down here. <laughs> there are actually, in spite of what your gaming instincts tell you, there's only a few pits in this game that actually kill you if you fall down. But not all of them will. Oh, also, yeah, if you uh, jump and hold the up button near stairs, you'll automatically land on them and continue to climb. I just, I, I sometimes wish I could walk faster than this. Alright, look guys, don't make this hard, huh? On their first swing, they're not dangerous. It's the second swing you gotta watch out for. Or when they do bullshit like that. I do believe this is... Nope, not here. This... There, it's what I was before. Like that. And, as before... You can just walk over. Don't even need to fight them. Now, this game actually has two ways that I can get to the boss room. So, I'll try to take the main route, but if I fall, it's okay. The bane of my existence, ladies and gentlemen. I hate these almost as much as I hate the jellyfish from Risk of Rain. Because they're designed to follow your movements. They're designed to react to how you move. So you can't be preemptive with them. You have to wait them out. Now, I'm going to get attacked by Medusa heads if I try and explain this, so... Those yellow platforms there, they react to a specific movement. Specifically, if you land on them, whether by jumping or getting knocked back, they will rotate and you will fall through them. If I fall down these, I will still be able to get to the main boss of this stage and stay on path A. However, if I'm trying to get to path B, I need to not fall off of them. So... I'm going to try and not fall off. Alright. The guy I have to fight here is not that hard. 
The strategy guide I found actually said that the only way to damage him is to, is to make the bell ring. This is incorrect. You can hit him at any point, and he has a very predictable pattern. He'll throw the bone, then he'll try to smack you, and then he'll try and use Body Slam. So if you just keep a distance away from him like this, you'll be fine. You should get a little closer, try to hit me, and succeed, but it's okay. Go ahead and jump. Bell will ring. And free mysterious hidden roasted dungeon wall chicken. Now, if you have the right items, like an axe or the book, you can attack these statues up here, the, the, at the very, very top of the columns. If you hit all of them enough times, they'll actually drop a money bag worth a lot of points. But I don't want to waste the Bibles that I have. Oh, uh, no, no, I won't show that off. I was going to show off the item crash for this, but it's actually kind of not good, and I need to save it up to get through this part. No, I don't want that item. <laughs> I skipped the first candle because I thought it was the axe. Alright, these guys take three hits each. However, if you have the Bible, they only take two. They're kind of like the floating eyeballs, but not so much. Now, for those of you who have played Castlevania Symphony of the Night and have been to the Clock Tower, you may be thinking of the ghost... Ah! You may be thinking of the ghost heads floating around. These guys are kind of like that, except for the fact that... Um, let me get my words right. Except for the fact that they don't constantly spawn. They spawn in limited sets. So if you keep pressing ahead, you'll end up spawning all of them and them all be on you. Now if I fall down these caverns, the pits down here, I'll still be able to get to the boss, like I said, but I'll miss my opportunity to take the B path. You want to go slow here. You do not want to try and fight the Spearman on his own level. Play the patient game. It will do you in good stead. Also, if you use the book to destroy some of these candles, they will spawn ghosts. You definitely want to use the book here. Oh, it only takes three hits there. Now, if you make it all the way across, there's a little dude that will actually try and steal your items. Sometimes it's better just to take the hit. So yes, if you want to go to the B path for this level, what you need to do is stand on this elevator here, on the right side, and then destroy that red rock up there. That will break the chain and you'll go up to the next level. But we don't want to do that today. Now it should be noted that with this particular guy here, no matter what happens, if you touch him, he's still going to shatter. So I could either touch him and make him break, or be mean about it and make him break. Makes no never mind. A full heal! Not a good sign. Now the game says I should probably be using the cross, if I remember correctly. But, uh, you know what? I don't want to use the cross for this. Not for this fight. Use the book again. Well, I might as well show off the item crash here if I want. He literally does that with it. I don't know why. I do not want to be standing up there. I don't want to be standing up here. For those of you who have played Symphony of the Night, the item crash for the Holy Book is not is supposed to be this rainbow laser of doom and awesome, but instead it's just throwing pages. Yes! Extra life is mine! Yeah. 
Mmm! Feels so good. Ah, uh, yes. Atop countless terrors. This stage has a number of paths that I could potentially follow. <laughs> Because I love you guys, and because I have the lives to back it up, I'm going to try and find the, quote, most difficult path to get through. But that's going to have to wait until next time. So until then, everyone, thank you for watching, and remember, if the boss uses his desperation move, get out of the way. Okay, maybe that's not quite as clever as saying, you know, remember to remember, but I'm working on it. Leave me alone. I'm trying so hard. <laughs>